let's continue our discussion about factoring trinomials. And let's look at some guys that are maybe a little bit more difficult, a little bit more challenging for us. Let's take a look at this one. x squared plus 15xy plus 36y squared. Remember, the first thing you want to do is look for the greatest common factor. Now, there's nothing that all these guys have in common. And you may be saying, man, man this is messed up. I've got x's and y's all over the place. What am I supposed to do? Well, it's really not that bad. You know how to break down the x squared, right? You know the x squared is going to break down as x times x. Notice that since everything here is positive, and we're going to have positives inside here. Well, so far so good, but what about this guy? Well, the y squared is a lot like the x squared in terms of how you want to break it down. You want to evenly break that guy down, so it's y in each of these binomials. Now you want to worry about that 36. How can you break down 36 to get 15? Well, let's think about the factors you have for 36. There's 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, and 6 times 6. Well, there's only one of these guys that's going to work because you have to add to get 15. It's not that one, it's not that one. 3 and 12. That's what we need to use. That will give us the 15. So we'll make this a 3y and 12y. Check this. x times x is x squared. 3y times 12y. Well, the 3 times 12 gives you 36. y times y is y squared. Look at the inside and outside pieces. When you do 3y times x, that's a positive 3xy. And on the outside, that's a positive 12xy. So when we combine all of this, there's your positive 15xy, just like we were supposed to have. So by evenly breaking down the x squared as x and x, and the y squared as y times y, we're able to get that xy term in the middle. These guys really aren't that bad. But let me tell you, sometimes people do crazy things. Sometimes people think that 2 times 13 gives you 36. Well, although 2 and 13 give you 15, 2 times 13 is not 36, it's 26. And well, that'd be silly if we made that mistake, right? Ah, glad that's not us. We'll let other people make those mistakes. Yep, sometimes we make things a little bit more exciting. Let's do this. How about 3x squared minus 6x minus 72. Now remember, the first thing that we're always trying to do here is to find that greatest common factor. I think I've said that every problem that we've done. Is there anything these guys have in common? Well, these guys both have a 3 in common, but does 3 go into 72? Well, if you remember your rules for divisibility, you're going to find out that 3, go, that 3 does go into 72. Here's how you check that. 7 plus 2 is 9, and since 3 goes into the sum of the digits, 3 goes into the whole number itself. So that tells me that I can factor out a 3 from this. Now, if I factor out the 3 from the 3x squared, I get x squared, the negative 6 taking away that factor of 3 gives me a minus 2x. 72 divided by the 3 is 24. So we have a common factor. Now we need to factor this trinomial. So the 3 is still part of the factorization. I'm going to take this trinomial and break it down. We know what to do x squared breaks down as x times x. 
What do you know about your signs here? We've got to multiply to get a negative 24. So you have to multiply to get a negative. Think about this. In order to multiply and get a negative, you need to have one positive and one negative. And then we think about the factors that we have for 24. Those factors for 24. 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, or 4 and 6. Since these guys have opposite signs, you're trying to find the difference between them to be 2. These guys have a difference of 2. But you also want to make sure that you end up with a negative number. So what does that tell you? that tells us that the negative number has to be the larger factor. So a minus 6 and a positive 4. Now when you check this, on the inside here you're going to have a plus 4x, and on the outside is a minus 6x. So that combines to give you a negative 2x. So that gives you the right middle term. This still gives you a negative 24. This gives you an x squared, and when you multiply back that common factor of 3, it will get back to your original. Okay, well that doesn't seem to be too bad. Well, let's make things a little bit more exciting, shall we? What if you're asked to factor this guy? Let's take 10 x to the seventh y squared so let's do minus, that sounds good minus 70 x to the sixth y to the third plus 100 x to the fifth y to the fourth you know, if you feel like you need to go ahead and pause the video right now, maybe you go get something to drink because, you know, it's going to be a pretty tough one, I understand. Um, oh, you're ready to go. Well, yeah, let's go for this. Remember, what's the first thing that we're always doing when we, when we try to factor? Greatest common factor. And don't you feel kind of silly saying that out loud? Hopefully nobody was around to look at you, right? You know what? There's no need to be ashamed of math. No. What goes into 10, 70, and 100? Hopefully all, all end in 0, so we know that 10 goes in there. And notice that they all contain x. We saw this in another video, that the amount of x we take out is going to be limited by the smallest number. So I'm going to take out x to the fifth. And they all contain y, so how much y can we take out? y to the second. So this first step is really probably the hardest thing we have here. It's finding that greatest common factor and factoring it out. Now, 10 divided by 10 is 1. I'm not going to write that, but it is 1. I had 7x's. I took out 5 of those, so I have x squared. I had y squared, but I took out all of my y, so I have none left. Now the middle guy. 70 divided by 10, so it's a negative 7. I had 6 factors of x. I took out 5, so I have 1 factor of x left. Three factors of y, but I took out two. That's one factor of y. Here, this is 100. 100 divided by the 10 is 10. We had x to the fifth, but we took out all of the x's. We have y to the fourth, and we only took out two. So we have y squared left over. Now, if you look at this guy, he's very similar to the first problem that we did in this video. So we're going to bring down my greatest common factor of 10x to the fifth y squared. And I expect this trinomial to factor well. Factor as the product of binomials. x squared we know breaks down as x and x. What do you know about your signs? You have to multiply to get a positive, but yet you still need to have negatives. So what we know is that the signs must be the same, and in this case they must both be negative. The first example in this video had us take the y squared and break it down with y times y, just like the x squared broke down as x and x. Now, what are factors of 10 that will give me a negative 7? Well, it just happens to be negative 5 
negative 2. So when you check inside and outside of here, this is a negative 5xy. On the outside is a negative 2xy. And all told is negative 7xy. So there's that same middle term. And you multiply it back times the 10x to the fifth y squared, you get the original middle term. And I trust that you guys will do that to check everything. So this guy had a greatest common factor, and then we factored the remaining trinomial.